is because of the Catholic Church and its Bible, the civilization which was, was created, that you only get the idea of abolishing slavery in Catholic Europe or that which developed from Catholic Europe. Nowhere else, nowhere in China, nowhere in the Muslim world, nowhere. Uh, there are individual cases, uh, certainly, but not mass ones. I mean, I think you could, for, for example, Mohammed uh, actually had, he, he had concubines. And he had this concubine, and he very liked the cloud and stuff. And then she had a boy. Yippee! So what he does is he frees her. Partly because, oh yes, good girl, you know, you've done just what I want. Uh, but also because if you free her, then the baby can become my registered son, you know, where otherwise it wouldn't. So there were cases like that, but how often does that happen? Well, not very often. But, so it wasn't unknown, it wasn't unknown. It was just, well, why would you want to do that? That's the, that's the individual yeah, yeah. thing. I mean, Mohammed's slave Bilal was never freed by Mohammed, no. even in his will, he didn't yeah. free him. And there's a black slave. So the, 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 the Islamic world just has still, I don't think still has a conception of freeing slaves. I mean, freeing slaves as slaves, not the individual who I might bestow my largesse on. Because I mean, there's, a, there's a, a Muslim convert called Jonathan A.C. Brown who's written a book on slavery in Islam. And he thinks that, well, it wouldn't return. But actually, in principle, in Sharia law, it's there. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of things that are so, there. That so that this could, could, so, you know, if, if we didn't have the, um, power of the Royal Navy or the general now Western hegemony over over um, the world yeah. and its values then of course the Muslims simply reassert slavery it, it seems be, to me very very likely because in Libya they do it now yeah, yeah, and they Libya. and they target the black Africans yeah, yeah. for this so there's clearly a perception of yeah. who the slaves would be as they were historically in East Africa with the black Africans and that slavery is just held back because it's the West's hegemony, hegemonic value system that prevents the Islamic value system reasserting itself at the moment. Yeah, this is a financial question. That's not a theological question. Because if you went to the, uh, the, 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 the slave owners in the uh, uh, west of, of Africa, and he's an educated man, he's been to Europe and that sort of thing, but he still likes his own system best. And you say to him, well, why are you doing this? And he says, well, OK, here's the, the Quran. I'm certainly allowed to work that. But look, if you don't like that because you're not a Muslim, here is the Bible. That's one thing they both agree on. How can you say no? Well, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If one world system, Islam, retains slavery and really has only grudgingly abolished it, but the other world system is the only one to ever consider that there might be such a thing as every man being free, yes. which is Catholic Christian civilization. Well, it's, then, it's not necessarily Catholic because there's a lot of slavery on the Catholics. Oh, don't think, I'm saying, don't think I'm saying that we are um, like just there saying, right, we come into power, we, come, we become dominant, and we say, right, that's it, end of slavery. No. We, our ancestors, kept slaves, absolutely, absolutely right, didn't challenge slavery. But eventually this challenge began to come. And I mentioned Pope Eugenius IV, as far back as 1435. The, the consciousness, which we'd say is inspired by the Holy Spirit, comes through the, the upper echelons of the church and spreads out. You get men like Francisco Vittoria in the New World is speaking in debates in Spain about the rights of Indians, yeah, yeah. which again is unprecedented. Yeah, everyone thought he was mad. They thought he was nice mad and they didn't execute him and the emperor listened to him and they said, well, that's very nice. Well, I don't, I don't think that's quite true because the, these were, these were set up debates that the monarchy was deeply involved in this issue and, and the welfare of the Indians was of interest to the monarchy, the Spanish monarchy too. And then you have, of course, um, Bartol Bartolomé de las Casas, Sorry, that was the one I was thinking of. All oh, right, sorry, okay. Sorry, okay. okay. And he's very much involved in what is now Venezuela yeah, yeah. and the, the treatment of the Indians there. So we have this astonishing development, this reflection on what is the person. 
which is unprecedented in, in human affairs. Even you go back to ancient Greece, you get a lot of philosophizing, of course, but no seeming reflection of, of using this to reflect upon the nature of the person as such, because of course the slave is the slave and there's no question about that. With us it becomes a question of man in general. So if you have something like the Greeks, and uh, the Greeks go to war with each other and with various other people, and they enslave people. Yes. So those people who they're enslaving are being enslaved basically being on their own side. Mm. Uh, so they, they have a concept of it's not that that man is a slave for life, you know, he's got slave branded all over. Uh, things can come and go. So, you know, think at home again, in the next battle, perhaps I can get out of this. Oh yes, I think, I think there's, a, there's a fluidity in the concept of, of slavery anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, there, there, there's the obvious classic one we have of the plantation slave, uh, who's African, of African descent. Yeah. But there's, there's the slave who rises in society to become extremely powerful. Um, and there's a whole range in between. So, and of course, even in the um, Deep South, there was the slaves who, who become extremely skilled in accounts or in, um, in, in various trades on the plantations in the South, not just the cotton pickers. But all that's, of course, of course um, smoothed out and flattened out in, in the you know, movie depictions of these things. So I, I don't disagree with you. There's different ways of looking at slaves, particularly into ancient Athens. Nonetheless, I, I, I fix you, I nail you to the, to the door of this. Yes. I nail you to Martin Luther's Wittenberg door of this point that it's in our civilization that the unique event begins to happen. A reflection upon what man is, and how slavery impacts upon that conception of man and that comes out of us and it, that hence we end up in a civilization which has now affected the entire world that it is not right to keep people as your possessions. Yes, but that is an ethic, not a religion. Uh, it happened that about this 16th century period people started moving and it might have been because of different sorts of economy they wanted to build or something. But it wasn't that they went one night and opened their Bible at an area where they never were seen it before. And it, it leaps out at them and it says you shouldn't have slaves. And it's good heavens, now we know. No, it's got nothing to do with that. It, what I would say, if I was a conservative who lived at that time, I would say that the church was, was leaving uh, it, what it was supposed to believe. I would go out with placards. Uh, not because I wanted to see slaves be beaten or anything like that, but because we're all supposed to be uh, people under God. And these people, these popes and people, I'm sorry, you know, he might be the pope, but he's still got it wrong. We know what it says, and he's just ignoring it. But remember that we still accepted kings, we still accepted lords, we still accepted fathers as the absolute heads of their households. So. As a Christian, it's not absolutely apparent that you would um, abolish slavery. What is apparent, I think, is that you must not ill-treat your slave. But then the question is, if you can possess slaves, to what extent can you discipline them? Because as a father, you can discipline your children and your wife. You can, as a king, you can discipline even to the point of executing your subjects. So these are very complicated matters, and I don't think that any a Christian um, will come to automatic decisions about what is the way forward. I think it is quite reasonable, and the only healthy way to go to avoid serious missteps, to actually um, see a gradual development of consciousness in relation to the slave issue. Then it is gradually walking away from the, the, uh, the Bible. If you think the Bible is like a constitution, whereas actually, of course, the Bible is a set of texts um, which talk about various things, um, and in fact, no single text of the Bible addresses the question, is slavery right or wrong? And, and so we can't expect an answer, but we, what we do is we expect an answer from the church when the question arises. Now, the question starts to arise in, the, the early modern period, 
really seriously begins to arise. Slavery in itself, is it right or wrong? And the church doesn't jump on it immediately, just as it doesn't jump on any question immediately, but it makes its, it makes its position clear eventually. Um, but that whole question is my, my main point is arising from this one unique Catholic civilization.